Hi everybody, welcome once again to Poker Week. Great to have your company as always. We're here at the G Casino in Luton, specifically just outside the Poker Room, where over my shoulder the latest event on the APAC season is taking place. We'll have a report of that later on in the programme. Well, as you can see, I've now come inside the card room. Uh, TK alongside me. You're always telling me this is one of the best card rooms in Britain. I'm not sure I'm going to argue with you. It is the best in Britain, and it's given us a bit of space. It's the first time poker players have ever had space. It's the way forward. There's nothing like it except in Vegas, and so it's a tremendous drive forward for poker players. Well, this is just about the closest I'm ever going to come to the gold medal awarded to the winner of the latest APAD event. They don't only get this, but of course a first prize of £3,750 and an $8,000 package to the GUKPT Grand Final. Jack is Irish champion, great to welcome you over here, and you've made the long journey to Luton. Of course, I wouldn't miss it. Okay, how are you doing so far? Uh, okay, I'm uh, just above aver uh, average, and uh, it's just too early to say, to say anything, really. Okay, do you find it changed your life, becoming APAD Irish champion? <laughs> no, not really. Not recognised in the street now? Um, in the local casino they do, but oh. that's about it. Like uh, Daniel, just reached the break of uh, the first day, how are you doing? Uh, I was actually playing on day 1A yesterday, but uh, unfortunately went out. So, okay. How uh, long did you last? Um, probably, I think, about halfway through the, the field on day 1A. just didn't happen for me. So, uh, a bit tough, though. You know, you're an English champion. You've got a bit of a reputation to carry around with you now. Uh, yeah, just, I don't think it's anything to do with that. It was just the uh, made some plays, didn't come off, didn't get the cards when I needed them, and... Uh, just one of those days, really. Lee, still going strong? Yes, still going strong. After uh, earlier dropping down to 5,000 chips, um, put my tournament life on the line um, with a, a flop set, flop set of sevens, got called, uh, doubled up to 10, 11,000. Shortly after, a couple of hours later, uh, same player gave me another 5,000, so uh, I'm up to about 17,500. Yeah. Well, the talking has stopped, and the action's just getting underway. It's the final table of APAT at Luton. Let's see how the boys get on. Andrew, you had the hand to push, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work out for you. No, it didn't, unfortunately, but there you go. It wasn't, you know, he's gonna, always going to raise me there. Um, he's only got me to get through, and there's always a chance I might fold. Um, I wasn't actually going to fold anything against one player. Turned out I had ace-jack, which looked very good until the river hit. There you go. It's one of them things, I suppose. Uh, Josh, many congratulations. You look pretty exhausted. Yeah, it's been a tiring weekend, a lot of concentrating, but uh, there we go. Are you pleased with your performance overall? I am actually, yeah. I mean, I had to make some moves. Uh, he said if it was a bit earlier, it would have folded. So I'm still happy with the move, but uh, that's poker. You brought your own fan club with you this weekend, of course. Yep, she comes with me to every poker tournament. My little good luck charm. Uh, so, yeah. This is Susie, of course, and uh, you like your poker? Yeah, but not at this level. I get too intimidated by them all. one of them things to be honest I think I'd play it exactly the same again next time it's one of the most aggressive players at the table small blind big blinds and I've turned the straight and there's not many hands that have beaten me and I, I felt it even like I just felt on the river he bet anything anyway so I was willing to try and take the chance give three cards but hopefully rope them in with, and what hands take the risk it's what hands can't beat me if they beat me, they beat me. I'm really thrilled with the way I played, so I did nothing wrong all tournament and the cards didn't fall my way at the end, but I'm really pleased with what I've done. Do you find it a tough final table? It's very tough. Um, there's a lot of good players, so it was very, very tough. I had a very big hand later on, which had got me over the million mark when um, the, I forgot his name, sorry, but it, he basically he called me with ace 10, I had ace jack, and um, I didn't see the flop because I was standing away from the table, but um, we split the pot with a, with a straight, so I felt a bit unlucky there, but overall, you know, I've been, I can't complain at all. 
And I've never played heads up before like that, you see. It's, when I've played live, it's always been a deal. Yeah. And we've got down the last three or four, we shared it. So, no, oh, I'll go away from this and I'll learn something. And I'll be back. Okay, what I thought was interesting, on the final break when you came back, you seemed to move up a gear there. You decided to get a bit aggressive. And yeah. As though you'd said to yourself, well, I'm going to get it done. I want to get it done now or I'm just going to go away and that's it. Well, it's something like that, yeah. I wanted to start moving, but... That particular hand, I'd got a misread. I'd, I'd got him one way or the other right, and I should have waited a bit longer to find out whether he was strong or weak, and I thought he might have been weak, as it happens. It was the other way, he was strong, so... Gareth, many congratulations. Terrific performance. Thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it hasn't kicked in yet. That was, a, that was a very, very hard heads-up battle, that was. Did you feel you had to win it twice after that nine kicked yeah. you in the guts early? The, the, uh, the ace just came out to the first car and I thought, it's all over here. And then just the catch on the river was just, uh, well, it was devastating. Absolutely devastating. It's almost like a physical body blow, I should imagine. It was, I just had to walk away and then uh, just sat back down, put the music back on and tried to relax and not steam. Well, what a fantastic three days. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Hour did he do it? That's the question. <laughs> and uh, he just outplayed the guy heads up in the end. Tremendous heads up battle, the best we've had all season. And uh, I think in the end, both players would agree the best man won. Terrific performance. Let's be fair on Scott, though. First time he's ever played heads up, so. Yeah, it, the thing went to and fro. Uh, either could have won it at many stages of the tournament, but in the end, uh, Gareth, who'd been uh, very close to the edge a number of times, got there and delighted for him. Yeah, one crucial hand, wasn't there? That. <laughs> The nine yeah, on the river. The ace deuce against nines, and uh, Gareth was in all sorts of trouble. Uh, Scott was out if he lost that. The ace flopped, and the nine came on the end. It's just the way poker is. It's a very, very exciting game, and uh, everybody enjoyed it tremendously. They certainly did. Well done to APAT for organising. Of course, one of the hats that you wear is chairman of APAT, and that means you do no work at all. Absolutely. I delegate well. You do. You do delegate very well. Really strong team behind uh, Mr. TK, Tony Kendall, and one of those is Richard Prue, the media director of APAT, we were lucky enough to catch up with him a little earlier on. The first time we've had two day ones. As I say, 300 people have had a whale of a time, and it's been brilliant. I think fair to say season one has been a great success, but so much more to look forward to in season two. In season one, we've offered about 1,200 seats uh, to players, and many of them haven't played live before. Uh, so it's been good for attracting new people into the market. In season two, with our new sponsor, Blue Square, We've got 60 to 70 tournaments being run, regional tournaments and the national tournaments. That's going to provide about 7,000 places for people to play live poker. And as I say, many of those haven't played before, and it's going to be very good news for our members. Yeah, it was interesting on this final table here, I think four of the players, it's their biggest ever live win. Yes, and I was speaking to the runner-up, and it's the first time he'd ever played heads-up. And, and you, when you think how well he's done to get there, and it was a very long heads-up battle, it really is a new experience for a lot of these players. Yeah, it certainly is. So what's going to be the highlight, do you think, in Season 2? What's the one thing you're really looking forward to? I think the one thing I'm really looking forward to is the amount of added value that Blue Square have, have put in, $200,000 worth, uh, for our players. It's double what we've had in Season 1. Every penny will be returned to the players. As I say, we've got um, all these new tournaments going on, including a number of different concepts. Pretty exciting times ahead. Well, clearly exciting times ahead for APAC. Very successful season one, season two. Looking forward to it. It's going to be absolutely tremendous. They've got a lot more events. Uh, these guys like Richard are giving their time for nothing. They are doing a terrific job for British poker. It is needed. We do need some uniformity of rules. And this added money for £75, it's unique in the entire world. Fair play to them. Now, what amazes me is how quickly these events sell out. Absolutely extraordinary. In a matter of minutes. It's a question of finding venues big enough. Yep, we certainly managed that here at Luton, and once again, I suppose we've got to congratulate all the people here. Luton, uh, best card room in the country at the moment. The staff were magnificent, and uh, the, the dealers all entered into the spirit of it. It was perfect from start to finish. Mm -hmm.